Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we're gonna talk a little bit more about the Chicago Pro, which wrapped up last night, and I'm sure you guys know the results, you guys know that Mohamed Fuda actually ended up winning, he beat Vlad Zuharuchko, but in this video we're gonna talk about a couple of very interesting things, especially regarding the scorecards. So, once again, before this show even happened, I thought this was gonna be between Tim Bodesheim and Muhammad Fuda, but somehow Vlad Zuharuchko managed to crack the top two, and at the pre-judging, at least to me, it seemed like Vlad was winning, I mean, he didn't have the most aesthetic physique, let's put it that way, and I thought maybe it looks different in person, maybe the judges saw something that we couldn't see on the live stream, for example, Vlad's lack of aesthetics, and also I think the conditioning of Mo Fuda was better in person than on the live stream so for example here's a photo that somebody captured with their iphone and even though this photo was not taken with a professional camera you can still see the details that you weren't able to see on the live stream especially in the quads like look at the feathers the deep striations not just the quads but also like the chest everything really the guy is freaking big, he's really huge, he has really good shape, like really long muscle bellies, nice and full arms, uh, round shoulders, separated chest, fullness everywhere, quads, especially legs, I mean, the only thing that I don't necessarily love about his physique is his a little bit more narrow shoulders, and I would have to say the back, not just the width in the shoulders, the width of the back, but the back itself, it looks asymmetrical, something is off here, I don't know if this is, I don't know, some kind of an injury, but I don't think he tore his lat or anything like that, I don't think it's any kind of nerve damage or anything like that, maybe he has a slight scoliosis, and maybe it could be just a posing thing, but I don't think it has anything to do with his muscles, like I don't think anything is wrong with his lats, he's just not uh, standing straight, and it's creating sort of an asymmetry, it kinda looks like he tore on his lats, but I don't think that's it, it doesn't really matter what it is, it didn't look the best, so in the back shots he definitely lost big time to Vlad Zuharuchko, and it wasn't only because of the width of the shoulders, like the size of the back, but also because of the lower body, I mean Vlad, even though his legs are a little bit too short compared to his upper body, so in his case, I mean the guy doesn't have the aesthetics, let's be, let's be real here, we're gonna talk about him in a second, but like in the back shots still, his back was wider, bigger, thicker, rounder, uh, more 3D, his glutes were bigger and more conditioned, harder, I would say hamstrings were also bigger, legs from behind, so I think Vlad won both back shots pretty easily. And yeah, Mohamed's tan wasn't that great in the pre-judging, he fixed it for the finals, but it didn't really matter, because based on the scorecard, he won both pre-judging and the finals with a perfect score. So I guess tan didn't hurt him at all. Now why Vlad didn't win this show, I, I understand it, I can definitely see it, it's because of the lack of the aesthetics. And you guys probably know this that lately, for I don't know how many years, the judges are definitely choosing more aesthetic guys over the freaky guys, and Mo Fura has just a great structure, as I said, the only thing is the back and the length of his clavicles, the width in his shoulders, from the front and from the back, so he's not exactly the biggest, the widest guy, but on his frame, he's packing a ton of muscle, he's symmetrical, he has deep separation, great quality, yeah, for sure he deserved to win this show. Vlad did bring a crazy wow freak factor, and I think this is a great start of the season for him, and he was second here, so he can win another show, the next show, maybe, like I said, he finally brought crazy conditioning to the stage, he finally showed on stage what he was showing to us for all these years on his social media, and look at his freaking glutes, like when was the last time you saw this kind of conditioning, this kind of freaking hardness in the glutes, and this kind of quality, and now I'm kind of seeing why he has those issues with his shoulders and delts and arms, I guess it's because he's not shooting any gear in his glutes, and there are guys like that, some guys just don't like to shoot their glutes at all, and I think he's one of those guys, it's showing, this quality, this separation in the glutes, it's not something you see every day, 
And also, like, his back is super, super thick, the hamstrings as well. He's a wide, massive guy, a true mass monster, a true freak. And now with this conditioning, this actually looked freaking amazing. But the lack of aesthetics, unfortunately, because of that, he wasn't able to win in this lineup. Because Mofura was phenomenal. And I don't know if Vlad can do anything else at this point. I think this is the maximum of his physique. He just simply doesn't have the, the prettiest structure ever. But he can get even bigger, even freakier. Not more conditioned. I don't think he can get any harder than this. But maybe he can grow more. But like the shape of his, you know, arms compared to his shoulders. And his skeletal structure as well. Like he has, you know, those stubby legs. Kind of like Nick Walker. And a lengthy upper body. And like the shape of the arms in the front double. The way his lats are inserted. They're also kind of asymmetrical. Also, I would say the shape of his quads. The waist size. It's just a little bit of a rugged physique. Not exactly the best, the nicest flow. The most aesthetic physique on the stage. But a freak factor was most certainly there but overall it wasn't enough maybe it's gonna be enough at tampa pro i don't know we'll see it depends on who else shows up really he nailed it for this one it's all about repeating the same thing and hoping for weaker competition all right now let's take a look at the scorecard we got a couple of very interesting things here so in yellow i highlighted mofuda and vlad and as you can see it was a clear cut win for mofuda perfect score at the pre-judging and at the finals it's not like it was close in the pre-judging and then mofuda fixed his uh, tan for the finals and that's why he won no 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 the judges already saw Mofura as the winner in the pre-judging, and so he won, deservedly so. Now, in the blue, I underlined Tim Bodesheim and Nathan Epler, and I saw a lot of people saying that Tim should have won, that he was robbed, stuff like that, that he looked amazing, and yeah, I agree, he did look great, but just not good enough to place any higher than third. But also, as you can see, it was extremely close between Tim and Nathan Epler, Especially in the pre-judging, Tim only won by one point, and then in the finals he won by four points, but it was very close, Nathan Epler could have placed third here, he almost beat Tim Bodesheim, so it wasn't really a conversation of Tim beating Vlad, that wasn't close at all, it was for the third, it was between Nathan and Tim. Now, as far as the battle for 5th and 6th, it was between Stanimal and Jordan Hutchinson. I redlined this in red, and this one was really confusing for me, because isn't it supposed to be like the prejudging matters more than the finals? As you can see, they tied. They both had 37 points total, but Stan won the prejudging, and Jordan won the finals. So how does this make sense? Why did then Jordan place higher than Stan? Did they switch that around so that now finals matter more than the prejudging? I don't know, but it shouldn't be like that. I mean, the prejudging is the judging and the finals is kind of like a confirmation round. So I guess I think who wins the prejudging, if it is Ty in the end, the one who won the prejudging should be the winner. But no, apparently it wasn't like that. If you guys have any explanation, tell me down below in the comment section. And then down below, I circled in, in green Hassan Mustafa and Robin Strand, because these two are very interesting. For example, Robin Strand, who placed third at the show last week at Vancouver Pro, he placed 16th here, or didn't even place at all. How is this even possible? To go in one week from third to last place, to 16th, or he's sharing that 16th spot with two other guys, so it could be 18th place, really. Weird. Very, very weird. I guess this goes to show how much the judging panel matters. I'm not sure who judged the Vancouver Pro and who is judging the Chicago Pro. I'm pretty sure at Vancouver Pro they had the Canadian judges, and uh, at Vancouver Pro we had the American judges. So I'm sure different people judge this show, and I guess that's why. I don't think Robin Strand looked that much worse at Chicago Pro to place that last when he was third the week before. Also very, very weird. And then as far as Hassan Mustafa... He placed 8, which is, I would say, a gift. And it's a phenomenal result for Hassan, considering his conditioning. I mean, I don't want to use the word conditioning here. Considering that he was completely, totally out of shape. Was he improved from Toronto Pro? Pfft, I don't know. 
maybe slightly. At Toronto Pro, he was 10 weeks out, 12 weeks out. And here he is, I don't know, 8 weeks out, 10 weeks out. I don't know what is what the hell is going on with this guy. I mean, what is he thinking? He's ruining his reputation forever. I think at this point, he should just hang it up and maybe compete next year. Apparently, something is not working. What the hell is the problem? Is it his health? Is it his inability to, I don't know, diet hard or do cardio? Could that be it? Or is it his coach? Is it Dorian Hamilton's fault? I don't know. I don't think I would blame this on him. I think it's all Hassan. I don't know what the hell is he doing. Is he cheating every night? It looks like that, really. Look at his condition. Look at his lack of conditioning. No separation whatsoever. A bunch of water and fat. This is okay when you're bulking hard, when you're on a lot of food, a lot of like insulin, stuff like that, when you're trying to put on muscle, you get chubby like this, and then it's okay. If he showed up like this at the Pittsburgh Pro Gas Posing, I think he would probably be the guy with the worst shape on that stage. I think Andrew Jack would have better condition than him and Samson Daura, and of course Derek Lansford. What? I don't know, what is he doing? The crazy thing is, he has enough muscle to be winning these shows. If he was in condition like Mofura was in, he would have probably beaten him. I mean, yeah, he doesn't have the best shape, but he is incredibly large. He is arguably one of the biggest guys in the IFB Pro League today. And uh, he it's not like he lost like the size and the shape and everything like that. No, no. He has no visible injuries, tears, nerve damages. He, his stomach is, I mean, it was always a little bit uh, bigger, but it's not worse, it's not horrible, it's only conditioning. For some reason, he just can't get in shape, can't get conditioned. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know what he's doing right now, I would like to hear Dorian Hamilton speak about this, because Hassan is not exactly very fluent with his English, but if I heard what Dorian has to say, like, if they were pushing really hard, and he wasn't able to get in condition, then it's time for him to stop the, the season, and do the offseason, refresh his body, and start over, but only Hassan knows what he's really doing, he could be skipping cardio, eating junk food every day, it looks like he's doing that. I don't know what he's doing, but he had four weeks between Toronto Pro and now, and, you know, it wasn't a long time, but you guys saw it, I saw it many, many times, bodybuilders like that, like, they're not in shape two weeks out, and in two weeks, they, they transform completely, Hassan made basically zero changes in four weeks, I mean, he got, like, 10% better, maybe, but here, this conditioning is still not acceptable, it's embarrassing, and by some miracle, he got eight here, I guess it's because of his size, and that's it. So, I don't know what is going on with him, what is he thinking, what is he doing, this is not acceptable, this is not the kind of conditioning a pro bodybuilder, a pro show winner, an Olympian should be showing up on stages, on shows, multiple times in a season, it doesn't make sense, but it is what it is, you guys tell me down below, what do you think, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, thank you guys so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye bye.